So I heard to get this book from upstairs and I have begun reading this again. I received this book, wow, I don't even know when this was first published. Um, 1976, this book was first published, The Legend of Shambhala. And the legend is that there is a realm, it is called Shambhala. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, is the king of it. And there are all levels of awareness in Shambhala, but they have come to a level of understanding that all human beings deserve food, clothing, housing, and service, coaching, guidance in what their service is in life. And this is all given freely. And what the legend also says is communities in this world that raise their own vibration to come to this same level of understanding that all beings deserve free food, clothing, housing, and coaching guidance in their service connect with Shambhala. So in 2008, when I came to Ithaca, I had this book and I knew that it was very much connected to Ithaca, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. His monks were here even then. Now we know that the Dalai Lama's library is being, you know, his second library in the world will be in Ithaca. And um, I had some very interesting experiences in 2012. I went to see His Holiness in Syracuse and had a huge transmission from him. And in some ways it was what Diane was sharing. Uh, what I, one of the things I remember the most was he came out on stage and, and it, was, it was just a, a menagerie, I mean, Dave Matthews was there. Whoopi Goldberg was there. Uh, Cindy Lauper played for this benefit concert for His Holiness. But when he came out, he asked the audience, how many people here are over 70? And he raised his hand and a couple of people in the audience raised his hand. How many people are over 60? Over 50? 40, 30, and 20. And obviously, because it was Syracuse, the dome, most of the people were 20. And he said to us, if you're over 40 years old, this world is not for you anymore. Your time has come and gone. This world is for them. And he said, so the challenge for those of you who are over 40 is to serve is to start asking that question, who am I here to serve? And he said, if we do this, if everybody in the world begins this process over 40 of asking, who am I here to serve? And realizing this world is not yours anymore. He said, within three generations, we will be living on a planet that will be like the Garden of Eden. He said, you will not believe how beautiful life will be just in three generations. So it inspired me. I met some other people who went to that. It inspired them. And I think everybody on this call is over 40. So I'll offer that to you as your intro for tonight's journey is to consider who are you here to serve? And are you still living for yourself or are you living for others? Now, the amazing thing about this book is it's a journey. It's a journey into this other realm. And the myths say that when certain communities, civilizations in other realms become awake enough to make food, clothing, housing, and communities, you know, uh, service and guidance to their communities, they are connected to Shambhala. 
And in some ways, Ithaca is one of those communities. We are making our way toward some big realizations here in this community around what has to happen for people, for our whole community to thrive. So when that happens, we connect to Shambhala and we receive this guidance and light. And that's what we're gonna do in our journey tonight is we're gonna journey there and offer you that opportunity to ask any question you'd like, but I recommend you consider, you know, something around your service, around why you are still here. Um, it's, it's a great time to do this in the world. And we'll use this book as our guide. So take a comfortable posture. If that means lying down for you, you can do that. I'm gonna mute everyone. And at the end, you can unmute yourself. I want to bring up our music. If you're wearing glasses, you can take them off. I really think, you know, I want to stress, be, be comfortable. Set yourself up so that you're comfortable. Comfortable as you can get. Let yourself take some of those deep, steady breaths. Mm. Just settle into your own heart. Take three steady breaths in and out. Deep breath in, long breath out. Deep breath in, long breath out. Deep breath in, long breath out. Remember His Holiness's words, this world is not for you anymore. It is for the younger generation. What is it that you have to give them? What is it that you have to serve? The legend says there are great ones in Shambhala. They are called the Supernal Three, the Radiant Seven, the lives embodying 49 fires, the Buddhas, of activity. Certain eternal spirits from Venus, from Sirius, from different constellations, and some Kohans of the first ray, all these are part of the council chamber of Shambhala. All these members are great, great initiates. As you just hear about this sacred 
land that is real, that intersects with our world. Allow your imagination to expand. See, feel, image of seven mountains that we cross through, similar to the seven chakras, the energy centers, that we journey through in our life. And when we come to the highest mountain, we find a path. See, feel, image now yourself on the seventh mountain path. You've been walking for some time. The sun is dipping below the horizon. You are making your way. around this last mountain, looking down at all the villages, all the cities below. Remember your journeys through these lands, all the people you met, plans you made for your life. Some came true, some didn't. Moments of great joy, deep sadness and pain. And yet here you stand on the highest mountain looking down at all the activity. One thing is for sure, life goes on. With or without us, life goes on. You wind your way around this mountain. And you come to a stream. The water is so clear. Realizing your parts, you reach down, cup your hands and drink deeply from it. As you do, you feel your whole body rejuvenate. Yes, it's the fountain of eternal youth. Though the body continues to age, this water, this elixir connects us to spirit, to our soul. It never ages, it never changes. You envision the light, the light, the light within yourself. That light of God, Goddess, the soul. You feel yourself rising up out of the body. Ascending higher and higher. Higher than even the seventh mountain. Till you come to the etheric city of Shambhala. So how does your light shine in the halls of Shambhala? The gate opens by itself as you come close. Feel yourself drawn to the perfect room where wisdom is shared. All these members are great, great initiates. An initiate is a center of energy, is a fountain of energy, is a receiver of solar and cosmic impressions. 
each initiate is also a transmitter. All members of Stronghold together form a vortex of stupendous energy. See yourself moving into the configuration with the other beings. Creating the perfect vortex of this stupendous energy. Energies coming from planetary, solar, and cosmic sources pour into the great chalice of Shambhala. These energies charged with the fiery purpose of the Lord of the world are the source of wisdom and power of the hierarchy and leading torch for humanity. These energies as a whole are the energy of Shambhala, which throughout ages came in contact with humanity through the members of hierarchy as a whole, but few times in history it bypassed the hierarchy poured down into humanity. The legend says it poured down first upon humanity and created the right condition for the implantation of the principle of the mind in the animal man. This gave birth to the human soul, awakening him and her from the age-long inertia and sleep. It poured down again in 1975. We are told a great destruction started on the mental plane. All thought forms of separativeness, totalitarianism, exploitation, and slavery are under the fiery hammer of this energy. As a burning fire, it is cleaning the polluted sphere of the human mind, preparing the age of sanity, freedom, love, and beauty. This burning up is leaving behind the ashes and the trash which we can see pouring out through the current world we live in. Low psychism in all its forms, witchcraft, hypnotism, black magic. All the residue of this great destruction of the mental and on the mental plane. Now new bridges are built between great powers. The vision of the one world, one humanity, is so clear now in the eyes of the youth. Even the blind in spirit can sense it. As you sit, the awareness of the age that we're in right now, ask any question within your own heart of all the great beings who surround you now. Life, my friend, is not a product of blind forces. Nothing happens by accident. Great engineers are watching the labor of humanity. Great days of joy, of health, of prosperity are on the way. Do not have faith in prophecies which tell you the end of the world is near. Tell you about the hopelessness of all good works and all endeavors to bring peace, to spread goodwill. Do not have faith in them 
They are the prophets of darkness. Human spirit is always victorious, always it will be. Humanity is a flowering bush, an opening lotus, a rising star. Our destiny is in our hands under the watchful eyes of Shambhala. Spread the news of joy, spread the ideas of one humanity, spread the ideas of brotherhood, of angels, and men and women. Lastly, there are three gifts for humanity that Shambhala has for each of us. One is opportunity. When the divine energy pours down, it builds a bridge, a communication line between the one who touches it and the door from which it emanates. It purifies and raises the fires of your being. It makes you to see yourself, your real face, the conditions of your life. It makes you to see the future, the vision. Thus opportunity comes to you to surpass yourself, to leave behind the burden of ages. The second gift is enlightenment, the destruction of avidya, ignorance. Ignorance is identification, attachment, changing of polarity from positive to negative. Ignorance is zero communication with the life of the universe. Ignorance is bottling oneself and floating in the ocean. Vidya, vidya, vidya is knowledge, which leads to enlightenment. Knowledge is the growing light. You don't need to learn to know. You know because you unfold. You liberate, you release yourself. Shambhala, salutations to you. The energy of Shambhala, the lightning, gives enlightenment because it destroys age-long accumulations of darkness. It destroys the chains binding the self to matter. Enlightenment, when all your lights on the Christmas tree of yourself are lit, their proper color and radiation, forming a chalice of blessings from Shambhala. Enlightenment is courage, daring, humility and endurance, and is gratitude, compassion, simplicity, serenity. third gift of Shambhala is brotherhood, sisterhood. The energy of Shambhala is destructive to all elements of separatism. It is destructive to all those who carry in their hearts and minds elements of hatred, separatism, selfishness. As the age of Aquarius increases its radiance into the sphere of our world, it will be more and more difficult to continue to hate And while trying to be healthy, to contain separative, selfish thoughts, and to be sane, to have greed, and a spirit of exploitation, and yet to crave creativity. The fire of Shambhala will amplify the energy of Aquarius and rhythmically will strike the earth. As a great hammer, it will pave the way for the reappearance of the great Lord Christ gave the command of this age, love one another as I love you. There is no greater love than the love by which one lays down his or her life for his or her friends. The 
love one another as I have loved you. Meditate, sit in this command, this gift. Love one another as I have loved you. Gently, slowly bring your awareness back to your breath. When you're ready, you can open your eyes.